video, I'm going to give you a brief tutorial on how to get started spinning on a spinning wheel. But first, I want to just give you one tip about selecting a spinning wheel. The one thing that I can say about selecting a spinning wheel that's right for you is to try multiple spinning wheels. That's pretty much the bottom line. If you do not have a spinning wheel shop in your area, then you can always try um, finding local people who have wheels that you'd like to try out. Uh, there might be a spinning guild in your area that you can go to and uh, they might have wheels that you could try or just checking out the wheels of the people that are there. If you have a, a shop that's an hour or two hours away, it's quite um, beneficial to go ahead and make that travel time and try out a few different wheels. When I was going to purchase my first wheel, I was looking at the wheels based on what product I wanted to turn out. And when I decided I was going to become a spinner, I said to myself, I want to spin lightweight yarn. I want to spin fingering to DK weight and possibly lace weight yarn. So everything that I had read said that I needed a wheel that had a very high ratio. And what that means is how many times the flyer or I think it's the flyer, how many times the flyer goes around to how many times the drive band wheel goes around. And so I was looking for a wheel that had a very high ratio. So I had my heart set on a couple of different wheels. And what I realized was that it doesn't matter what your ratios are. Sure, it's going to be easier with a higher ratio and you can create that yarn, but you can also create the same yarn with a lower ratio. It just is a matter of treadling faster and letting the twist build up in the fiber before allowing it to go onto the bobbin. So don't base your decision on a specific spinning wheel based on features alone. Yes, you may want a wheel that, ha that can do several different things. For instance, the ladybug wheel, which is the wheel that I have, can is comes, I think it comes as a Scotch Tension wheel, but you can switch it to double drive. And that is very cool that you can do that. So I was, that's the wheel that I purchased because when I tried out the Ladybug, the moment that I sat down to that wheel, I felt the fluid movement of the wheel and I was able to pick up the spinning very easily. I also at the same time tried a different wheel um, that I just, every time I sat down to it, everything just seemed to kind of not work out right. So I just decided that the Ladybug was the wheel for me because it just was so, I just felt the rhythm every single time I sat down to it. And I did try these two different wheels over several days. Um, and I chose that wheel over Knittopia two years ago when Kagi Tian brought her Ladybug wheel with her and she was trying to sell another wheel as well. And I tried both wheels over a couple day period and just every time I sat down to the shacked Ladybug, I just felt that rhythm and it just seemed so fluid to me. And every time I sat down to the other wheel, it just was like, I, it was a struggle to try and get the fiber onto the bobbin. So needless to say, by the end of the weekend, I had ordered my ladybug and had it delivered to me at the retreat the following week. So that was fabulous. But yes, just try different wheels um, as much as you can. If you have your heart set on one, make sure you try it out before you um, really invest the money. And if you don't have a spinning wheel shop in your area or a spinning guild in your area, Try to attend festivals that you can try different wheels out because there are a number of opportunities that you can try try uh, wheels. So I hope that helps you with selecting your spinning wheel. Okay, before we start actually doing the spinning, I just want to go over a couple of things about the wheel uh, so that you kind of have an idea. This is the flyer 
that comes with that actually this one doesn't come with the wheel this is actually the woolly winder flyer that i have for my shacked sidekick but this flyer is where the bobbin goes and this is the bobbin and based on whether you're doing um a certain type of tension in this case i'm going to be using a scotch tension so i'm going to put the the bobbin on this way you see that on this end of the bobbin the the um it has a smaller whirl than on this end of the bobbin. And this end of the bobbin is used for when you are using uh, double drive. And this one is when you are using scotch tension. This is how the bobbin gets braked. So I'm going to place this on the flyer in this fashion because I'm going to be using the scotch tension on this um, tutorial. Then you have also have whirls that come with your wheel you will find that you will have multiple sizes. In each one of these, there's two different sizes that you can use. Now, the smaller the whirl, the faster everything's going to turn, and the more twist that's going to get into the yarn. And you need more twist for the lighter weight yarns. If you're doing a heavier worsted weight or a bulky, you might want to use the largest whirl that comes with the wheel. Now, typically, you get these four whirls with your wheel, but they usually have other wheels or other whirls that you can purchase for your wheel. In my particular case with the Shacked uh, Sidekick and the Ladybug, you can purchase two other um, whirls that each have two um, levels. Now, I don't know exactly what the ratios are on these specific ones that came with the wheel. I did purchase the, the, um, the one size smaller because, again, I like to, to spin lightweight yarn. And in order to do that without having to treadle a mile a minute, you need a smaller whirl. So, again, the smaller the whirl, the faster um, everything's going to turn and... Um, the more twist will go into the yarn. I'm just going to use the the medium size whirl, or this is, I don't know if this is considered medium. And from what I understand, it doesn't really matter which way the whirl goes on your flyer. I always just put it small side in. That's just me. I don't think it matters one way or the other. And then it's going to slide into the spot in the back here. And then the front slides in that way. Now, I've always been told that it's a good idea to have a little bit of give. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but there's just a tiny bit of give that my flyer can move in there. If it's too tight, if I push this right in there and I can't move this at all, I haven't um, tightened it down yet, but if, if I can't move this at all, I'm going to get a little bit of tension um, when I'm spinning. So I just want to have a tiny bit of give just so I can move it. And then I'm going to tighten down um, this, I think this is called the Maiden. Don't quote me on any of this terminology because I'm not 100% sure. And then I will need to lift up the, um, the brake band. This is the brake band um, that goes on the bobbin. And then also the drive band that's going to go on the, uh, the whirl. I do recommend that when you first get a wheel, you take some time uh, to just sit and get comfortable with your wheel. Probably about 15 or 20 minutes, just treadling, just getting, getting the feet started and making sure that you can stop and then go back in the same direction again. And just um, stop and then go back the other way. Actually, that was probably not a good idea. So just keeping everything Just trying to um, treadle and just get comfortable with the wheel, knowing that you can just get it started again if you if you happen to stop. Now, if you do have if you do struggle with getting the uh, the uh, wheel going back in the right direction, I I mentioned in my drop spindle tutorial about going clockwise and counterclockwise, and this is the same way. When your flyer is turning clockwise, you are doing a Z twist. 
when your flyer is turning counterclockwise, you are doing an S twist. So if you're going to do the traditional method of spinning Z, spinning singles in Z, and then plying an S, then you want to make sure that your, fl your flyer is going clockwise when you are spinning your single. Now, if you have a hard time adjust getting your feet to make it go the right way, you can always give it a little kickstart with your hand um, to, get it, to get it going in the, in the correct direction. So once you have taken some time to get familiar with your wheel, get familiar with the treadle, then you should start with just spinning yarn. Yes, this is sock yarn. So again, if, if um, I don't have a tutorial on how to put the leader on the bobbin, but um, I'm sure there's one out there. If, if you need me to do a tutorial on that, just let me know and I will um, take care of that. So I have pulled it through the loops on the woolly winder. Again, this is the woolly winder. This is um, just a different type of flyer that fits this wheel that will allow the yarn to go evenly on the uh, bobbin versus having to move from hook to hook. And then I will use my orifice hook to grab that yarn, or I'm sorry, grab that leader. And then I will just get this started. And I need a little bit more tension on my bobbin. Now you can tell when you're, when you're um, either your leader or your yarn or your single or whatever is not pulling on quickly enough, you will know that you need a little bit more tension on your bobbin. So you can just adjust that tension and then try again and see how it feels. And if it's too much, then back it off just a little bit. You should be able to pull this back out just slightly, just like that, when you, um, it should have just enough, just enough um, tension on the bobbin that will pull it in nicely and you can pull it out also. Now if you're going to be spinning um, a heavy single, you might need a little bit more of tension. But again, I tend to spin a lightweight single, so I need very little tension on my bobbin. So I'm going to go ahead and when you first get started, all you're going to do is just practice feeding the yarn into into the um, orifice with the treadling and whatnot. This is a very important step, and I am so glad that Kagi TM forced me to do this. Yes, I said forced because you know when you when you get started and you've decided that you want to learn to spin, you just want to spin right now. You don't want to be d doing practice. But she said that it was very important that I did that, and I did it for probably a good 15 or 20 minutes, and I was very thankful. So all I've done here is I've just lined my um, my sock yarn here that I'm spinning with my leader so that I can get it to twist up in there, and hopefully it'll stay. And then all you're going to do is practice feeding it in, just like that. So you're not having to, to think about drafting or anything at this point. You're just practicing, feeding it in. Okay, so, so once you get your yarn on there, all you're just going to do is practice feeding it in, feeling the motion of letting it just go on to the bobbin. That's all you're going to do. Treadle and feel the motion of the treadling and the rhythm of of drafting. But technically you're not really drafting, you're just feeding the yarn in. But this is you're just it's just a practice to get you started and you're just going to continue to feed it on and just practice that rhythm of keeping the feet going and then feeding the single into the orifice. And again, if you need more tension on your bobbin, then you can adjust that tension. And I definitely highly recommend this 
uh, for at least 15 or 20 minutes before you attempt to start spinning. Yes, I know you want to just get started with the fiber and go, 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 but I can tell you that this will be very beneficial and you will be thankful that you took the time to, to spin just yarn onto the bobbin to practice. Okay, so now that we've taken some time to spin the yarn on here and we've practiced that, we can, we're ready to go ahead and start um, plying. Now, this is just a bit of Cory Dove fiber and as I mentioned in my um, terminology tutorial, they usually, your, your roving or your top or whatever usually comes in a pretty big piece. And so I don't like to spin that much at one time, so I'll just break off a little bit at a time to spin from because I don't like to hold that big wad in my hand. Plus, my hands get hot, and when your hands get hot and that, that, that fiber is feeding through your hands, it, you can felt your fiber by doing that. So um, in order to start uh, getting your fiber onto your bobbin, you need to join it with your leader. Now in this case, my leader is, it just happens to be um, some yarn that I was practicing with, but that's okay. Um, you can just join it right with that. So all you're going to do is lay it right next to the leader, just like that, and we're gonna draft out a little bit as we go, and then allow that to twist up with um, the, the leader. So I'm just going to let that twist come up and join everything together. Give it, let it get a little bit extra twist, more than normal, because I don't know how it's going to stick with that. So, and then you just go. Now this particular method that I'm using is a short forward draw. This is the method that I like to use most because it provides a nice single a nice smooth single and all I'm doing is I'm keeping when I draft out my fiber I'm keeping the twist in front of my fingers I'm not allowing the twist to come back into this fiber which allows me to keep from getting lumps and bumps in my fiber or in my single if I were to let go of this and then try and go. My fiber is kind of a little fuzzy right there. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, um, but my fiber is a little bit fuzzy right there and it's not as smooth as the what was previously going in. I'm not holding my fiber um, tightly with this hand. This hand is kind of just a guide. It really doesn't hold the fiber. If you have your brake band um, pos uh, correctly tensioned on the bobbin, then you should not have to squeeze this fiber. I can tell you that I've seen people spinning and this is what I see them doing. You see how, how much struggle that is? Because I'm gripping this fiber down here and I have to grip this to get to pull it out. And it's not allowing me to have a good a nice smooth single because I'm fighting with the fiber. The single that I just produced is not very consistent because I'm trying to fight with the fiber and at the same time I'm not able to regulate how much or how little I'm letting come out because because I'm having to fight with it. Now if I loosen up my grip on this the, the um, supply fiber and I just allow my drafting uh, hand to pull the, the, can, the um, amount of fiber out that I would like the single to be, then I will have a more consistent single and it will be what I want it to be rather than trying to fight. Now you will notice that I will sometimes do a little bit, just a tiny squeeze with my thumb after I draft it out just to just to be sure that I'm not going to lose, um, like if I draft a little bit too much, I don't want the 
um, the single to run off into the bobbin. That does happen sometimes, but um, if you are consistent with your single, you shouldn't have too much of a tr trouble with it. But the idea is to not fight with it. This is not supposed to be hard work. It's supposed to be relaxing. So, and my fingers, this, this hand that's holding the fiber, these fingers are only tight enough to keep the twist from running up into the fiber supply. So, again, this is a short forward draw that I'm doing here. This is what I do most often because, again, I like a smooth single, and this produces that. Now, you can also do a short backwards draw, which is a similar motion, except instead of my um, the hand that's holding the single, instead of this hand moving, this hand's going to move. So, what I'm going to do is draft the fiber this way and then let it go in and draft the fiber and then draft the fiber and then let it go in. Pull it back, pull it back, pull it back, and then let it go in. Pull it back. I don't like this method as much. I feel like I'm moving more than I need to be, but some people prefer this method of drafting to a short forward draw. There are different uh, methods of drafting, and like I said, with trying different fibers, you should try different methods of drafting because you might find that one method works better for you. One method might get you what you want more than another method. So definitely try different methods. Uh, long draw is something that I probably will never do because I like to be in control, and with long draw, um, it's kind of a crapshoot. <laughs> you get what you get. Now you'll see here that, I hope you can see, that there's a little bit more fiber right there. Now I don't know if this is what you're supposed to do, but I like my yarn to be consistent and I don't like those little slubs in there. So I will take, I will stop when I see that and I will kind of just pull it out of the hair. Again, I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do. I don't know if it weakens the, the uh, single or not, but I don't like them there, so I just take them out, and then I make sure that I run my hand back over it to, to um, let any additional fibers that are kind of hanging there twist back in. But again, short forward draw is where I like to be when I am spinning. Okay, so now I would like to show you, again, how you would add more fiber. I've run out of fiber here, so now I need to add more fiber in. And the best way to do that is just as you're spinning to lay the uh, fiber kind of at an angle to what your, to the single, and just allow those, um, those fibers to catch in there and then continue on. Sometimes... If I get to a little bit too much and I don't like how it looks, I'll just pull it out, break it off, and go again. It, it's really, you, it, spinning is like knitting. If you don't like what you're getting, then try something different. If you like what you're getting, then I guess you're getting, you're doing it right. So I will just let you watch for a couple of minutes here while I um, spin, just so you can kind of see how I do this. Um, I do, they, they say that you, when you're spinning, you should work across your fiber and back, meaning that if I'm spinning this, I should be pulling and moving across my fiber as I go this way. I've never been good at that. I just kind of, um, spin and pull fiber and if I see that there's going to be a little bit if I'm working down one side of the fiber and I notice that the other side I'm not pulling too much from that I'll just slide over a little bit and pull from that as well it just you have to find what works for you and I don't work well back this way so when I get to the edge of the fiber I'll just turn it over because that that works best for me 
Again, spinning is like knitting. You have to like the product that you're getting, and as long as you like what you're getting, then you're doing it right. And there's so many different methods of, of doing it right that you just have to find what works best for you. And like I mentioned in the drop spindle tutorial, if I happen to accidentally let go and allow the twist to get into my fiber, I can easily just untwist before I draft out. Now if I let the twist get into my fiber and I don't untwist before I draft out, I'm likely to get a slub. There was not that much twist in there, but if I allow it to get up in there like this and I don't untwist it, actually this, this fiber is really, really um, smooth, so it's allowing me to pull it out where it really shouldn't. But some other rovings might not allow you to get a smooth um, single if you allow it to go up into the twist. But this Corydale is so smooth and the prep on it is wonderful. It's the, all those fibers are just sitting right next to one another. But again, if you if you need to untwist it, if you're getting a little bit too much um, fiber, again, here's a little bit that's a little bit thicker than the rest of it. So I'm just going to stop and I'll just pull out a little bit, and it should be about the same. And I'm not going to worry too much about those little hairs because when I ply it, they'll all work their way into the ply. So again, I'm just going to let you watch for a couple of minutes while I spin this and you can just kind of get the feel of how I draft.
Okay, so you could see there how I manipulated the fiber with my left hand to make sure that I didn't, I wasn't working down one side of the uh, fiber without catching the fibers from the other side. Um, but you will find that the hand that is doing the drafting is the hand that controls what is going to come out. If I decide that I want a thicker uh, single, I just have to draft more fiber. And the hand that pulls the fiber, you see how that all, all of a sudden got thicker? Because the hand that pulls the fiber from the supply is that hand, that right hand that's drafting it out. I could just grab more fiber or I could grab a little bit less. It's just how you draft it. You are in control. It does not control you. If it's controlling you, then more than likely you have your bobbin tension too tight. If you can control it and say, I want my single to be this thick, and so I know I have to draft out this much fiber each time I draft, then your bobbin tension is probably perfect. So again, you can see, watch, I'll start grabbing more fiber and you'll, you'll see the difference in thickness. Just like that. I just grab more fiber to pull through. And if I want to thin it back down again, if I want it to be thinner, I just grab less. Now, you might want to be able to do a sampling a, of plying to see how this is going to turn out, how what you've spun so far is going to turn out when you finish. Now, when I spin, I very rarely get a sampling of plying. Sometimes I do just for the fun of it to see what it's going to look like because when you're spinning, when you're spinning up four ounces, sometimes it's going to take a long time to spin up four ounces. So if you want to know what it's going to look like in the end before you get there, you can take a sampling. And all you do to do that is to pull out a bit of your single and then ply it together with itself. So I will show you. I'm just trying to get a little bit more single in there because I was changing um, those different weights. So all you're going to do is stop spinning, remove your fiber supply, and pull it out. Pull out a bit. I want to use this. Uh, pull out a bit of fiber or a bit of single. And then break it off. I'm going to wrap it around my um, thing over here just so hopefully it will... Keep the single from flying back up in there if I can get it to wrap around and then I'll break it off and I wanted to use my um, orifice hook to hang on the end like so and what will happen by hanging this on the end is the orifice hook allow gives it a little bit of weight and lets it spin back on itself And then you can just let it spin until it stops. Let it un untwist just a little bit. Does it look like it spun a little bit too much? And that is what, that's what the, the yarn will look like when it's all plied up. So that's how you would do a two-ply, but what if you want to do a look at what a three-ply looks like? And you pull out enough length to put it together. And then together again. And then break it off. Oh, and it went back up in there. And then again, put, put your orifice hook on there. It's a little fiddly, but you can do it and allow it to spin back on itself.
and then you have what the three ply will look like. So you have the two ply and the three ply. Now this one has a bit of that where I've changed to different weights, but it gives you an idea of what it will look like. And that's about all I can tell you with um, just some basic spinning. I will be doing a traditional plying and possibly a Navajo ply tutorial at some point. But uh, this will get you started on your new wheel. So thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, so I'm just going to give you um, a closer up version of... Uh, my drafting and I'm working on my e-spinner right here and hopefully this will give you a better angle of how I do my drafting. I do my drafting um, the same both for the e-spinner as well as um, the regular wheel. I will not have sound because the e-spinner is quite loud and um, this way you can just see my drafting up close. Mm -hmm.
will help you to um, learn how to draft better yourself. Thanks for watching. Now, as I look back on the footage from the spinning tutorial, the wheel spinning tutorial, I did not mention anything about uh, drafting, on whether or not to draft or not to draft. And like everything else that I have told you before, um, just try different things with your fiber because what, what you might like drafted, somebody else might like not like drafted. Um, for the most part, I don't draft my fiber, but if it seems to be a little bit matted down, like if it's been in my stash for a while, um, sometimes it gets c too compressed and it's harder to draft, you know, to just um, draft out while I'm spinning and I have to pre-draft it. That's what I mean, pre-draft versus not pre-drafting. Um, so sometimes I do pre-draft it a little bit just to loosen up those fibers a little bit. Uh, you have to decide what works best for you. When I do polar silk, I pretty much don't draft it at all um, if the prep is done well. Uh, the the, the polar silk that I am doing um, at the office, the Into the World polar silk, I'm not, I'm not pre-drafting that at all before I spin it. But the Into the World uh, BFL that I'm currently spinning on the e-spinner or the mini spinner, I am pre-drafting that a bit. Um, that has been in my stash for almost two years or about two years. So it has been compressed quite a bit um, while it's been in my stash. So it's not that it's felted or anything like that, but it's just, it's just compressed and it's not as easy to draft out. So I have pre-drafted that a tiny bit just to make it a little easier to spin. So if you're finding that your fiber is difficult to get, if it's difficult to get consistency with your fiber, maybe try and do a little bit of pre-drafting of that fiber to see if you can't get a little bit more consistency with it. Um, and if you're having trouble, um, if you are pre-drafting and you're having trouble with it slipping out of your hands like it's, it's too loose and it's um, flying out of your hands too much. First, check your brake on your bobbin to make sure that that's not too tight. And secondly, maybe don't pre-draft for a little bit and see what happens if it makes it easier for you to spin. So I hope you like that spinning tutorial and I hope you will continue to come back and check out more of my tutorials. So thanks. And last but not least today, I'm just going to go over a couple of the um, vendors that I've received donations from in the um, previous couple of weeks. I can't remember. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since I mentioned um, since I mentioned uh, vendors, I think. But I did want to take a, a couple minutes and just read off some of them. In fact, I just opened these boxes yesterday or this morning. <laughs> I can't remember. Anyway, uh, revolution, Revelations of a delusion or, Delusional Knitter, Art You Wear, Twisted Fiber Arts, Mary Maxim, Unicorn, Miss Babs, and Barmates. So those are a 
few of the the um, the vendors that we've received donations from. We are still looking for a couple of more door prizes. I have to log these in, but I think that we are going to be needing. probably about another five to, to seven um, door prizes. So I'm hoping that we can collect five, another five to seven door prizes between now and the end of March. I'm hoping to have everything all compiled and sorted out and ready uh, by the end of March because I want to spend the first couple weeks of April just relaxing, getting ready. Because last year, I think I've told you before, last year I ended up getting sick at Netopia and so the first weekend was not as pleasant as it could have been. Um, I wasn't really, really sick. I was just tired and worn down. But it meant that I couldn't really, you know, enjoy myself as much as I would like to. So, this week, this year I'm doing things totally different. In fact, I'm taking my vitamins every day. You know, now that I'm working out as hard as I am, I need to be taking my vitamins anyway. But I am taking my vitamins every day. Um, Steve was sick. Not sick. He just was feeling tired and run down on, I think it was Thursday. And he took an emergency. So I took an emergency because I didn't want to get sick if he was getting sick. Um, so I'm, I'm really trying to be proactive this year and not, um, not leave myself vulnerable as we get closer to the retreat. We do have a couple of midweek spots that are still available for this year if you would like to join us at Nitopia. It is, um, Nitopia is going to be the 18th through 28th of April, and the midweek spots will be 18, 19, 20, 21, like the 20, the 22nd through the 25th or something like that. So... If you want to join us and you can take the time off work, let me know and we'll, I'll get you all that information. I do have a few spots left for Natopia 2014. I, um, I decided last week that I wasn't going to do a lottery because the spots weren't filling up as quickly as I thought they would, which is great, which is fine. Um, so I'm not going to be doing a lottery this year. I'm just going to do a wait list if somebody happens to drop out. So if you are interested, we have spots, um, I think, for all legs right now. So if you are interested, please get in contact with me, and um, I'll get you hooked up with that information as well. And that is all I have for you today. I am probably going to snuggle up on the couch and um, do some knitting this afternoon. Um, maybe I will be wearing my knit swirl because it has been a little chilly down here in the basement. So that's what I'm planning on doing for the rest of the day. So I hope you have a great week and I hope you're knitting blooms this week. I will talk to you next week. Bye.